Um, this is uh, Yuri's Night 2011, 50th anniversary of human spaceflight video interview with astronaut Ron Guerin. Um, Ron, thanks for joining us with Yuri's Night and uh, being a part of this. And so I'll start with uh, the key questions here. Thanks, Ron. Uh, please, introduce, please introduce yourself and your affiliation. Uh, my name is Ron Guerin. Uh, my affiliation is I'm a crew uh, member on Expedition 27 and Expedition 28 on the International Space Station. How has the first 50 years of human spaceflight changed society? Well, you know, I, I think it's it's really appropriate that we're celebrating the uh, 50th anniversary of this uh, first human spaceflight because I really, truly believe that on that, you know, April 12th, uh, that day, you know, humanity changed. That we became a species that was no longer confined to, to the Earth. And I think, you know, what we've seen in the 50 years since then has been nothing short of miraculous in the progress that we have made in our ability to go to space and to live in the space and to work in the space and to you know make the discoveries that uh, we are making every day in space. What do you envision the next 50 years of human spaceflight to be like? Well, the, the next 50 years, I think, you know, I think one of the, the big benefits of going to space, you know, was obviously, you know, to, to prove that we can do it, but beyond that, I think it, it's, you know, and really put a focus on who we are as a species, who, you know, who we are as inhabitants of, of planet Earth. And, you know, when I think back about, you know, that Christmas Eve where we, for the first time, we saw an Earth rise on the, on the lunar horizon, you know, I, th I think the way we looked at our planet, the way we looked at ourselves changed forever. And I think what you'll find in the, in the next 50 years is, you know, that perspective maturing to the point where we are you know, achieving those challenges that face our planet, we're solving those problems that face our planet, that we're using that unique orbital perspective to, you know, put a focus on planet Earth, to put a focus on the challenges fa that we face. And, you know, I think that, you know, the, the, the space exploration is going to be a big part of that. Now, beyond that, you know, I fully expect that, you know, we are going to do whatever we choose to do. You know, we have the te technological capability to do it. All we need is the will to, to uh, accomplish whatever it is that we, we set our mind to. And I hope that that includes, you know, establishing uh, outposts in different parts of the solar system, maybe starting with the moon. We have asteroids, Mars, uh, and, and it's someday, you know, going beyond our solar system with human exploration. And to, you know, not just to have human exploration, but also, you know, continued robotic exploration and to really, you know, unlock the mysteries of our universe. How did you get your start in the space industry? Uh, I got my start uh, on July 20th, 1969, uh, and then uh, again July 20th, 2000. Uh, on July 20th, 1969 was the first moon landing, and I just, you know, this is one of my most vivid childhood memories of, of watching Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, you know, making those first footprints on the moon. And I, you know, had decided there, you know, as a young kid that, you know, that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. And, and you know, July 20th, 19, or July 20th, 2000, uh, myself and 16 other, other members of the class of 2000 received their phone call from the chief of the astronaut office, you know, informing us that we were selected as astronauts. So, you know, it was a long road, uh, but that's, uh, that's how I got my start. And um, for me personally, it was through the military. I was an uh, Air Force fighter pilot and then a test pilot, and uh, that was the road that I, that I took to, uh, to become an astronaut. Can you please say a few words for the people around the world that will be celebrating Yuri's Night 2011, the 50th anniversary of human spaceflight? Well, I just want to welcome everybody to this uh, incredible uh, celebration of 50 years of, uh, since the first human spaceflight. And, you know, having launched from the very same pad that Yuri Gagarin launched from almost, uh, you, know, you know, just a few weeks uh, you know, difference from that, that historic anniversary, you know, I can tell you that is a, it is a great honor. I mean, it's just a coincidence that, that I had this honor to, to be able to do that. And so, you know, I just want to join with everybody around the world to recognize that day where we became a different species, where we became uh, a, a species that was no longer confined to, to our Earth. And uh, that is something that is really, uh, you know, something that we should celebrate, something that we should embrace, something that we should be proud of. And uh, we should continue that exploration. We can continue making those steps, continue making those progress, so that we can reach out and uh, explore the solar system and then beyond. How has flying in space changed your life? Um, 
flying in space, I think, changed my life in that it reinforced some of the beliefs that I had before flying in space. You know, looking back at, at our absolutely beautiful planet um, and to see the beauty of our planet, but then at the same time, you know, to realize how fragile it is and, and to see that, you know, paper-thin atmosphere that wraps our Earth and, and to also think about all the challenges and the problems that we have on our Earth, I think it reaffirmed a belief that I held long before flying in space, and that is that each and every one of us has a responsibility to leave it just a little bit better than we found it. And, uh, you know, I think that that orbital perspective that you get when you look down at this, you know, planet hanging in the blackness of space is something that can't help but to affect you in some way. And um, for me personally, it was just, you know, a reaffirmation of, of the fact that we're all in this together. We're all riding through this spaceship, uh, through, the, through the universe that we call planet Earth. And it's something that we need to take care of, and we need to take care of each other. Now you described this already a little bit, but maybe you can add a little bit more about how you would describe the Earth from space. Well, I mean, describing the Earth from space is, um, you know, when I, when I first got to space, um, my first space flight, I really kind of felt like I was looking down, just looking down at the Earth from, a, you know, in an airplane flying really, really high. Obviously, I could see the curvature of the Earth. I can see the blackness of, of space, but it wasn't until I went outside and did a spacewalk, and I was on the end of the, the space station's robotic arm, uh, about 100 feet above the space station, looking down at the first, looking down at the space station, and looking down at the Earth behind that, that I really got this sense that, you know, I wasn't just looking down at the Earth; I was looking down at this planet hanging in the blackness of space, and you know, it really was a, uh, you know, a remarkable experience to be able to, you know, be in that place, to be there, to look down at this enormous space station, you know, most complex structure ever built, and to think about that, you know, 16 nations all work together building this thing, this in, uh, just an incredible accomplishment of humanity, and to look at that ac accomplishment against the backdrop of the indescribably beautiful Earth was, was just breathtaking. And again, you know, like I said before, the, you know, really one of the striking things about looking down at the planet is how very, very thin our atmosphere is, and then to think that, you know, that little paper-thin layer is all that separates every living thing on our planet from death, you know, it's something, you know, really hits home that that's something that we really need to take care of. What is the source of your passion for space exploration? Uh, my passion for space exploration, I think, comes in, in just a curiosity of, of trying to find, uh, you know, the answers to questions, uh, find out, you know, what's beyond the next hill. It's a uh, you know, a feeling of exploration, of, you know, wanting to know what's out there, wanting to know answers to some of the questions that we have. So there's a, you know, a big curiosity about, you know, what it's like to, to live off the planet, to, to you know, wake up and, and realize that you're floating in your sleeping bag and, and to look out at the earth and to, and to, you know, just be out there in space. It's, um, you know, it really is a remarkable accomplishment of humanity that we are able to do that. And, um, you know, it's really exciting and it's really an honor to be a part of, of that, you know, exploration that we are doing every day. What space figure do you most admire? Like if they had a baseball card of a certain person in the space industry, who would that person be? Well, I, I mean, it's really hard to, to pick <laughs> one person who I would most admire as, a, as uh, an astronaut or a cosmonaut, but, but you know, you know, two of the biggest events, I think, um, or I, I'll say three events, three of the biggest events was obviously Yuri Gagarin's launch, becoming the first human to fly in space, um, certainly the, the first moon landing, Apollo 11, and um, the first space shuttle mission. And so the, the individuals that were involved with that, Yuri Gagarin, uh, Bob Crippen and John Young, uh, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, Mike Collins, those guys, you know, all did something that nobody else had done and and frankly we weren't absolutely positive that we could do it and so those guys took tremendous personal risk to further exploration and um, they're not the only ones there's many others but you know those those three events really stand out as as very significant events in the history of, of human spaceflight and uh, certainly you know if it were not for those individuals you know we would not have the uh, progress that we've made to date how do you think we can best educate the public about space and get them involved? Um, I, I think the, you know, one of the best ways that we can educate the public uh, in, in getting involved in what we're doing is to get them involved in what we're doing. And so as much as we can, if we can have interactive uh, ways to communicate with, with uh, people on the ground, people on Earth, 
uh, it, you know, whether it's in the space station or in some of the vehicles that we are getting us to, sp to space. Um, obviously, the internet opens up, you know, a lot of doors for us to be able to have people, you know, not just act as spectators uh, of, the, of a space mission, but actually be participants. Uh, there's a lot of education act, uh, outreach activities that we can incorporate where, again, students aren't just watching astronauts conduct experiments. They're actually involved, in some cases, designing experiments um, and, and, in some cases, you know, helping the astronauts as they, as they um, uh, do some of the research that they're doing on board the space station. So, again, I mean, the short answer to the question, I think, is to do whatever we can to uh, allow people to participate to the maximum ex extent possible in the missions as they're going on. And on April 12, 2011, where will you be and how will you be celebrating history? Okay, hopefully, uh, the plan is for me on April 12, uh, 2011, to be on board the International Space Station. Uh, right now, we are planned to launch on March 30th, 2011, um, on the Gagarin spacecraft, uh, the Soyuz spacecraft that we've named Gagarin, uh, again, from the very same pad that Yuri Gagarin launched from. Uh, we are uh, planned to dock with the International Space Station on April 1st. And so if all things go according to plan, we'll be on board the International Space Station celebrating that very, very historic moment uh, from space, which is an incredible honor to be able to, to experience such a, and, and recognize such a, a momentous occasion while in space. Fantastic. And if there's any other comments or thoughts that you'd like to add on here, uh, now would be perfect time for those. Uh, not that I can think of. Um, I think we pretty much hit, hit everything. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Ron. That was fantastic, and I'm sure um, everyone's going to really enjoy hearing um, from your perspectives and, of course, following your mission and, and uh, enjoying seeing what kind of messages come from you, at the, of course, relating to Erie's Night and other parts of the 50th anniversary celebration. And It's uh, pretty exciting stuff. Thanks, Ryan. I hope it, I hope it all uh, works out the way you, you plan. I'm sure it will. And uh, uh, like I said, I'm eager to do whatever it is I can do. Um, but you know, obviously, we have to work through the proper channels to make sure that it all comes about. Sure, absolutely. All right, Ryan. Have a great day. All right, you too. Thanks. Okay.